Hey everyone, Pastor Bill Wiggs here from the Sunfield and Greenwood United Methodist Churches in Southern Illinois with a devotional for Tuesday, March 2nd. Well, we're continuing on in our series on Paul's pastoral epistles and specifically on 1 Timothy. Over the last several videos now, we've been working our way through the fifth chapter, and today we come to the last two verses, and these are really simple, so it's probably going to be a fairly short devotion. So let's look at them now. 1 Timothy 5, 24-25 Remember the sins of some people are obvious, leading them to certain judgment but there are others whose sins will not be revealed until later. Okay, let's stop there for just a minute. When we're looking at this, we're remembering all that comes before it as Paul has been trying to help Timothy help the church at Ephesus get straightened out. There's been a lot of false teaching. There's been all kinds of other stuff going on in the church there and uh, really some behavior that's inappropriate as well. He's just been talking about, you know, the way that we're supposed to treat one another as Christians, been talking about keeping good health in order to do ministry more, uh, talking about really the, the importance of staying with the Word of God as our primary concern. And now he is reminding him that you really have to, as a Christian and as Christian leaders, do your best through the power of the Holy Spirit to live an upright, holy, righteous life. Because the truth of the matter is that there are some people where you can see their sins, they wear their sins like a, a picture t-shirt. You know, it's got the words right on it or whatever. Uh, you know, their sins are just out there. They're doing things that they know is wrong, that, that Christians know is wrong, that really everyone knows is wrong, even if they're trying to say it's not wrong at all and, and you Christians, you're just too uptight. There are even some Christian leaders who are doing things that are quite sinful, and it's obvious to everyone, but oftentimes they've been given a pass. And so he says, remember the sins of some people are obvious, leading them to certain judgment. And so there's some people, you know, we, we go on this thing, uh, judge not lest ye be judged, but we forget that Jesus said that we will be judged by the measure with which we judge others. So, it's not saying that there's no judgment, it's just saying don't be a hypocrite, don't judge someone for their sins when your sins are just as obvious as theirs. So the measure that you've been measuring others with, that's what you're going to be measured with. And if you're measuring others with the Word of God, then you must measure yourself with the Word of God. And some people, it's obvious they're not believers, they're living lives of hedonism, and we know that their judgment is certain that when they die or when Jesus returns, they are going to go to hell unless they repent of their sins, regardless of the fact of whether or not they say they're Christians or say they're unbelievers, or maybe they even have that title reverend on them, or whatever. It doesn't matter. Some sins are very obvious, and God will judge sin, and he will judge sinners who have not repented. But then he says, but there are others whose sins will not be revealed until later. Now, we've seen some of this lately with the passing of, of Ravi Zacharias, a great Bible teacher, apologist. Uh, I loved his teaching. It really touched my heart. I learned a lot from him over the years of listening to his radio ministry and also, you know, the other teaching and things, watching videos on YouTube of his question and answer sessions and very things like various other things like that. I thought he was a wonderful teacher. And I never would have suspected that he was living a life of sin. But it's come out since his death that he was uh, sexually mistreating women, that he was uh, having what amounts to affairs against his wife and things of that nature. There are some people's sins which will not be seen until later. Now, I don't know in his last breath if he repented, and I'm not going to be the judge as to where he is now. But the truth is that his sins have been revealed. And it, it goes back to what it says in, let's see, I'm going to get this right here, Numbers 32, 23. Be sure your sins will find you out. You know, the point there is, is that sin, no matter how well we think it's hidden, 
will be found out at some point. And therefore, the better course of action is obviously to turn our lives, our hearts, over to God and ask Him through His Holy Spirit to work in us to help us to live holy lives. So let's look at that verse 25 now. In the same way, the good deeds of some people are obvious, and the good deeds done in secret will someday come to light. Okay, I like this verse a whole lot better. Maybe you too, too. Uh, some people's good deeds are rather obvious. Uh, there's plaques on their churches or on the end of the pew, or, or there's buildings named after them at hospitals or wings at schools, and, and people know about their good deeds. It's out there all over the place. I'm not going to make a value judgment if that's good or bad, but what I will say is that if the only reason we do good things is so that people will put our name on something, we'll put a plaque on something to say, hey, this was donated by Bill Wiggs or whatever, uh, then that's not good. And the reason it's not good is not that you know we shouldn't honor people who do good deeds, but that if that was the motive for doing it in the first place, then the scripture says we already have our reward. But then it says, and the good deeds done in secret will someday come to light. I don't know about you, but several times when I have done a funeral over the years, people have come up to me and said, you know, uh, you'll never know how much Joe did for me and my family. Uh, Joe's a generic name here. You know, how... I've seen where people have said, you know, uh, my family was without coats. All my kids, they were going to school without coats. And their principal, I knew a man who was a principal, he bought them coats, but he told us not to tell anybody. But I, I want him to be honored at his service today because we couldn't afford it. He kept my kids from freezing. Others that would come up to me and say, you know, they bought us food and we didn't have food, or they paid our rent, or, you know, whatever kindness it was, those tend to come out. Usually when we are mourning a loved one is when we learn of all that they did for others. And so those good deeds shouldn't necessarily be hidden, but if someone finds out we're doing them and honors us, fine but we're not to blow our own trumpet. And the truth is, even if they're not found out in this life, even if after we die, someone doesn't come up to the pastor or a family member at the funeral and say, hey, I want to tell you about what John did for me or whatever, they're found out in heaven because God knows. You see, God knows our hearts, whether they are good or evil. God knows our hearts, whether we're really living for him or if we're living for the devil. God knows our hearts, whether we are selfish and stingy or whether we are givers and loving towards others. God knows. And so ultimately, our judge is not human beings. Our judge is not those who might give us accolades. Ultimately, our judge is the king of the universe, the one who created all things that's seen and unseen, even created us himself. Well, since he is our judge, since he is the one that we want to honor, then let us honor him with our lives. Every one of us has our failings. God knows them. There's no hiding them from him. We may hide them from others, but we can't hide them from God. And so we should seek daily to surrender ourselves, our lives, our all to the Lord. And if we will do that, then God will bring to us the blessings that we need. Will they be public? Sometimes. But many times they will simply be private blessings that God has given us. And ultimately, if we put our trust in Jesus Christ for salvation, the good works that we end up doing will come as an outgrowth of that. Remember, it's not good works that saves us. It's not our own righteousness that saves us. It is the righteousness of Jesus Christ who shed his blood for us on the cross. If we'll turn ourselves over to him, no matter if we are lay people or clergy, no matter if it's man, woman, or child, God will do the work in us and he will bring the blessings. Amen? Well, let us pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, we're just so thankful for your love that you show to us each and every day. 
Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit would speak to our hearts, that you would help us to live righteous lives before you, that you would be glorified in all that we do. Lord, we thank you that you are with us each and every moment of each and every day. So help us to live for you and not seek the accolades of others. In all things, though, Lord, may we turn our life over to you and allow your Holy Spirit to work in our hearts. Be with all who are struggling today. Help them to know your love and your presence. Be with the sick, Lord, we pray, and heal them. Be with those who give themselves for others and give them the blessings that come from a life of service. In all things, Lord, we want to honor you. So we pray it all in your precious Son's name. Amen. Well, uh, tomorrow is Wednesday, and we will have our Bible study and prayer meeting at the Sunfield Church at 6 o'clock. Uh, wear your mask, come out. Uh, we're going to be uh, studying the Word together. We're going to be praying together. I hope you'll come out and be a part of that again, 6 p.m. And then on Thursday, we'll have one of these videos, and Thursday night at the Greenwood Church at 6 o'clock, we'll have our Bible study and prayer meeting there. I hope that these videos and these services and Bible studies are all a blessing to you to help you to grow in your faith and to show God's love to others. Well, until tomorrow, my brothers and sisters in Christ, for those of you who join me in Bible study, or until Thursday when we'll be on this video again, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you, and may he give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You have a great rest of the day. God is faithful.